Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Today we're talking about the water boy. That body looks like a USB stick, but it's not. If you attach a key or a small digital camera or some other light item to it and drop that into the ocean, a balloon pops up, there will be a blinking LED inside it so you can even see it during the night. It will inflate and bring our devices back to the surface so we can go and recover our items. Now the interesting question is, is this body going to work with items as our DJI Phantoms? There are several stores that sell these plastic parts. You simply attach those to the water boy. And right now, we could attach the water boy professionally to the legs of our DJI Phantom 3. But we should keep in mind that our DJI Phantom 3, for example, weighs about 1.4 kilograms, while the water boy was especially made for items up to a mass of one kilogram. So let's just head over to the dive college Lanzarote, my buddies that taught me how to dive. And uh, let's just find out if the water boy works or if it's a complete fail while working together with the DJI Phantom 3. Stay tuned. This episode is brought to you by Dive College Lanzarote, the best place for your first steps in diving for awesome dive courses and for exploring extraordinary dive sites. Check it out yourself, divecollegelanzarote.com. Once arrived at the dive college myself, I wanted to figure out the Phantom's weight with the props attached. Because I only own one Phantom 3 as well and cannot sink that one model, I was then looking for weights I could attach to the water boy that weigh just as much as the Phantom itself. Once taped together, I handed the package over to Bart, my formerly diving instructor at the dive college Lanzarote. Well, just a few days before, at my birthday, I had to go to the doctor due to a bad ear infection. Because of this stupid ear infection, I couldn't go diving myself. And uh, well, I gave Bart and Javier some instructions and they swam out to the sea and were never seen again. No, just kidding, knock on wood three times, buddies. Well, Bart decided to dive and wait at the bottom at a depth of around seven meters. The first thing that we noticed is that it takes the water boy a while to get activated. It didn't execute while sinking, but after a few seconds on the ground only. Let's be German. After exactly 16 seconds, the balloon started getting inflated. It was like waiting for Godot, nothing happened, the balloon had no chance to lift the weight off of the ground. Pause. Just a short bit of theory before we continue. If you feel a balloon at the surface and then we take it for a dive, it will shrink while you sink. A rhyme. And that I, a fantastic poet. Well, the deeper you dive, the higher the pressure. And the higher the pressure, the smaller the balloon. The more compressed the air inside and the less weight it can carry to the surface. But what am I actually trying to tell you? Let's get in depth for a second and slow things down. The pressure at sea level is one bar. At 10 meters, the pressure increases to two bars. And at 20 meters, the pressure already increases to three bars and so on. A balloon that was filled with, for example, six liters of air at the surface sinks down to 10 meters, two bar of pressure. The new volume at 10 meters is cut in half. From formerly six liters, it now at 10 meters stores three liters only. If we sink it to 20 meters, the pressure shows three bar and the volume inside the balloon will be shrinked down to two liters and so on. And with the volume, we cut away the strength of the balloon to lift off weight off the ground. That's why it's way easier to recover an item from shallower water with uh, such a water boy than from the deep Mariana Trench, for example. But of course, this entire process works the other way around as well. When diving back to sea level, the balloon will enlarge again due to the reduced pressure and it will be filled with six liters of air again at the top. That is magic or simply physics. And that very process is the reason why divers always learn to breathe out while climbing back to sea level. I mean, only imagine what would happen if you would take a deep breath, fully fill your lungs at 20 meters and then go back to sea level. Don't breathe out. I don't want to say lung explosion, but uh, well, diving is fun, I swear. Continue. Now let's see what happens if we lift the weight up. 
at what depth will it be able to take over and start ascending itself? Okay, we gotta focus it. We couldn't lift the 1.4 kilograms weight at all. Not even when the balloon was at a depth of about 1 meter only. But don't switch this tutorial off right now. This tutorial was a nice test, but not a precise test. And precision could be saving your phantom in case of a splashdown. When I was 11 years old and took my first lessons in diving, there was one thing that I learned that really impressed me. Actually, it was a question. Why does a super heavy ship swim? while a light coin sinks down once it touched the water. The effect that makes a ship stay positively buoyant is named displacement. A ship displaces many many liters of water while the small coin has a very bad weight distribution, is small and plain. As you see it's not about the weight only, but even more about the shape of an object when it comes to buoyancy. Next we even have to ask ourselves whether an object has other floating capabilities as trapped air or if there are any materials built in that can support a positive buoyancy as foam for example. Once we combine all of these factors together we can find out if the balloon can lift an item off the ground or if that fact fails. The first mistake is actually made by the manufacturer. They say that the water boy is able to lift off one kilogram in general. No comment and thought on all of these factors we've just been talking about. Finally I can say that it might be possible to lift up a phantom from shallow water due to its water displacement material and shape, but I don't think it is possible to lift a phantom off of the ground from deeper water. And because the balloon takes so long to execute, the phantom will probably sink a few meters before the balloon pops up and I don't really think um, the balloon will then go and save your phantom. I cannot say whether I recommend the water boy or not, I'm honest, I'm not using it while flying over water. A product link can still be found on tomstechtime.com slash gadgets for all those of you that either want to take it to the test yourselves or that are planning to fly over shallower water. Before we finish things up, let me briefly say thank you to Zev Nadler and the Firearms Concierge in Arizona for supporting my channel. You can support my work as well by leaving a thumb up, a nice comment and a donation at tomstechtime.com slash donate so I can keep up the work. Don't forget to subscribe, this was Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time, stay tuned, fly safe.